Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, my name is Abdul. Thank you for coming today. Most of the people here wouldn't recognize my face, only the organizers, because it's my first time in a public. Uh, thank you. If you bear with me a couple of minutes, uh, the amazing speakers and the performance we see, I think there's nothing more we can emphasize more. Maybe it's more appropriate if I share my own experience with you. So, summer 2002, Ramallah. I was living there at that time with my family. We're just having dinner. Nothing super fancy, just white, white cheese with some olives and tea. Nothing super fancy. And out of the blue, five military jeeps stormed the building that we're living in. It's a three-story building. My uncle lived in the top one. We live in the middle. My other uncle lived in the, the first floor. All of us had to leave within two minutes. Women, children, men, everyone leave the building. The children, including myself, that's what I remember. We were just cornered with three soldiers around us, heavily armed soldiers. All the women were pushed against the wall, facing the wall. All the men put in their knees, hands behind their back, and handcuffed. And the reason behind that is nothing. No proper cause, no justification, just for their own amusement. And this is a this is a story that happened to almost everyone in Palestine at that time. And this is only one tenth of what's happening at the moment. Just going back a little bit of time, we do you realize, I, I believe most of us here, we realize that Israel, as a democratic state, contradict itself because Israel is oppressing the majority in that land. And the majority are the Palestinians, they're not Israelis. So because of this contradiction, Israel had to follow three strategies, a genocide, ethnic cleansing, and apartheid. And that's how you win a code democratic elections. So the genocide, it can't happen between day and night. It happened slowly over, over 76 years now, even more. So we can't forget what happened in, in, in Atantura, that was back in the day, where they wiped out an entire village. And guess what's at this moment, guess what's in there? It's a parking, a car park for a beach. That, that space, it was a village with over 500 people living in it. Uh, Deir Yassin massacre, that's another massacre. Sabra and Shatela, and of course, what's going on in Gaza right now. So a genocide doesn't happen between day and night, and that's what's, what we're saying for the past 400 years. My family are living in Gaza, and, and, and I have a lot of cousins and family over there, and what's, what they've been living is a genocide. It's just one step forward. This is the peak. We haven't seen these numbers before, but these kind of actions, it's been happening since 1948. And that's not enough, of course, because a genocide can't happen so fast for the Israelis. They need to go to the second step, which is an ethnic cleansing, and that's what happened to my grandfather and his family in Beit Mahsir. I'm originally from Beit Mahsir. But I was living in Ramallah because my grandfather forcibly kicked out of his house with all the land, all the house, along with thousands of Palestinians, they've been kicked out. And this land, at the moment, uh, Israeli settlers are living in our house. My family, Hundreds of thousands of families, as till this moment, they still have the long, rusty metal key of their house in, in the 1948 borders. They still having a hope to go back, and we will go back one day, and that's why it's been bad. It's been bad for the next generation now. I'm from Beit Mahsir. Beit Mahsir is only 14 kilometers away from Al Aqsa. So b b basically, we are part of Al Quds. We are part of Jerusalem. That's where I'm from, and we can't go there. Number three is the apartheid, which is shocking. It's shocking the numbers and the facts that we have about the apartheid. 
probably we all heard about it, but we know that 20% of the population in Israel, in the 1948 borders, are Palestinians who hold the Israeli citizenship. These people, according to the law, they should have an equal rights, but 20% of this population, they're not allowed to buy or lease a land, even though they hold the citizenship of the country. It's impossible for them. If you're Palestinian and live in, inside the border of 1948, your salary will be 60% less than an Israeli, a settler, who's coming from abroad, stealing the land. They're at least 60% higher just because they are not Arab. They are not Palestinians originally. So, and that's why Israel contradicts itself as a democracy and a peacemaker. It's not a peacemaker, and that reminds me with with a, a, a South African journalist. His name is Mondal Makanye. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. After he visited Palestine, he literally said word by word, and I quote, the apartheid, and he's referring to the South Africa, the apartheid looked at the blacks as inferior, but the Israelis are not looking at the Palestinians that are human beings at all. And that's from a South African journalist who lived both sides. And it is true, I agree with him. And, and um, Edward Said in his book Orientalism, he also agrees with him when he specifically mentioned about imperialism, how, um, how the Western looking at Arabs, not as they are, from the imperialism scoop, imperialism lens. And that's why we have some uh, woman from the French parliament saying that it's morally justified to block all aid on the people of Gaza. And that's because they're not looking at the Palestinians as human beings, as equals. And that's what we're saying. And that's why uh, war is peace to them. Geno according to Israel, genocide is a peace. It's just an act of peace. Committing a genocide, wiping out indigenous people, millions of people, that is an act of peace. That's a democracy. That's, that's what they're claiming to be. But it's not. It is not a democracy. This is a genocide. And um, this has been happening for 400 years. It's a continuation of what started in 1948. The stories that I hear, and this is it's very touching to me, to be honest. I'm getting emotional every minute I'm spending with my Irish friends. The stories that I hear from my Irish friends are very much similar to the stories that I lived as a child, are very much uh, similar to the stories that I heard from my grandparents and the, the older people and, and the people who are living in, in Palestine. So that's why I truly believe, and I, I've seen that with my own eyes, the Irish public are playing a huge role in the front lines of fighting this, this injustice and this genocide, and they're fighting for the Palestinian rights. And, and, and that's why the Irish public do understand the story that I begin with, the story that they're seeing on, on a daily basis in Palestine. And that's why you, it's you guys who are playing a huge role to end this genocide, to fight for the liberation, to fight the imperialism and the colonialism, not only in Palestine and everywhere. And you've done it before, and you're doing it now again. That's what you're doing today. That's why we're all here today. I just want to end, my time's running out, just want to end really quickly with one thing. Um, in the General Assembly in the United Nations in December 11, 1948, in Article 11, it clearly says refugees have the right to return. And refugees, and if they don't want to, they need to be compensated for the damages and the loss that they, they had. And that's from the UN in 1948, and the article still exists. And that's why myself and another seven million, over seven million Palestinians who are living abroad, not allowed to go in. When my grandma passed away, she was in Ramallah. I wanted to go to her funeral, to the burial. I couldn't. I've been sent out from the borders. I was in Jordan at that time. I wanted to go to her funeral. I couldn't. 
and that's why 7.2 million and over that number 7.2 million wants to go back wants to have the right to vote for a government wants to have a free land wants to be able to travel from the north west south and east of Palestine without having uh, a military checkpoint every every five minutes without having a, a gun pointing at their faces without having a drone flying over their heads I want to be able to go to Beit Mahsir, my village, and take care of the olive trees that my grandfather left behind. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for listening to me and free Palestine. No one's free until Palestine's free. Thank you. Thank you.